what do you see from Florida State? Obviously, they're highly ranked. What, what kind of challenges do they present? You know, number one, they're they're just super fast and athletic and, and want to get up and down in transition. So that's number one key. We got to slow them up and neutralize them in their transition game. If they get easy buckets, um, you know, it's going to be a long night. And also just trying to keep them in front of us, keep them out of the paint. Um, they, they really thrive off getting downhill. So how do you do that? Number one, we got to value the ball. We got to take really good care uh, of the basketball and, and value possessions. And then also take really good shots because a bad shot against them can lead to a run out, run out layup. You guys have talked about it, you talked about it too, just the adjustment period that comes with defensively on this team. What does that look like for you and what kind of principles are you emphasizing for new players that are yeah. coming in? I think it's always the hardest hardest thing. Um, you saw it last year, you've seen it with some of our transfers um, and or freshmen. Um, so for us, obviously every single day, every possession, there's a standard defensively and it's hard and you, and you got to work really, really hard. So our core values are really just trying to keep the ball in front of us and, and do your job on the ball. The, the more we get blown by, the more we get people going by us and getting in the paint, now we got to rotate and we want to try to eliminate as many rotations as possible. Obviously that's not, you know, it's not going to be a perfect game, but try to eliminate as many blow bys as we can. Um, so, you know, depending on what kids were taught in high school and or at their previous program, just the intensity level and I think the demand of defense um, and it matters and again, the, the effort and the focus of it, um, I, I hold that to a high, high level and, and it's really, really hard. The quick team that you're guarding, how big can fouls be in this? It's really important, you know, and obviously in certain positions we're not as deep. so. We got to be really locked in. We talk all the time about discipline and defend without fouling. But again, it's a first game. Um, how are the refs going to call it? You know, usually at the beginning of the year, they call things tighter. So we got to be really, really disciplined of keeping our hands up and, and defending with our feet against really, really quick and athletic guards. How close, in your opinion, was last season to what you want to do in terms of speed? And it seems like you're a team that could thrive on taking a lot of threes, and we've seen that be successful. Like, yeah. How close were you to on balance with that last year? You know, it's not, you know, like, we're not have a certain number of threes that we want to take. We're not kind of like the men's side where, you know, Brad wants to take a million. Like, we don't really operate like that in terms of, like, our analytics. Like, we want, if it's an open rhythm shot out of our offense, and I want them to take that. So, you know, if we're getting Phoenix threes in catch and shoots or in the half court, I'm cool with that. I'm great with it. Um, but it's not like something that I'm going to say, hey, you got jack threes to get to a certain number just because we're going to play the numbers game. Um, now, we did shoot it better the year before, you know, my first year. It's, it's interesting. I don't know why. I don't know. You know, we shot more. So, uh, you know, I think this team, we have a lot of good shooters. Um, we probably have more shooters than we did last year. So hopefully that number will go up. And again, if, if we're open, if they're a rhythm shot that we practice a lot, I want us to shoot any any time that, that we're open. Kind of playing off of that, the field goal percentage is the same both years mm -hmm. with a three-point change. What do you kind of make of that? And, you know, kind of speaking about yeah. what you were I think about. also we played bigger, you know, so KB and Hobby were in there a lot together. Jada, you know, shot the ball really well her for uh, my first year. And then obviously she got hurt. Um, and then we, you know, some of our players, Makairo didn't shoot the ball from three well early on, and then she did late in the season. So we just weren't as consistent. And I think a lot of that, there's a lot of reasons why, but I do think we're built more this year to, to shoot the three better and more of them. So hopefully that's the case, but I think that a lot of factors played into that. You got Kendall talked about slow starts last season on Friday. Did, in the off season, did, did you study that? And, and if so, like what do you think maybe contributed to some of that? I mean, it's something we've looked at and talked about and, and tried to dissect and evaluate since last year. You know, that's where last year we were still doing it. We were put into practice. We have a first quarter every day. And, and do we win, do we lose? Like, um, you know, at, at some point, I, I'm probably old school. At some point, you just got to be ready to go. <laughs> There's only so many things you can do and, and you got to be ready. You get, it's focus. It's, it's a focus of being ready to execute at a high level on both ends of the floor. And I mean, we have a sports psychologist. We do visualization before games. We start doing it at halftime. It's like, you know, so we're, we're trying everything we can possibly think of. But at some point, you got to come out and when that ball's tipped. You, you got to be ready and you got to play. Seem to have their version of double-double machine like KB and uh, Timson. 
Yeah. Uh, what do you see in that matchup there between Kendall and her? Yeah, Timpson's really good, and obviously she's a little bit different than uh, KB, where Timpson's long, she's super athletic, has a little bit more bounce, but um, KB's used to facing up against people that she's maybe not as athletic as and or undersized. I mean, we see that all the time against everyone we play. So um, KB just has to do what KB does and just be disciplined, It's have a high motor, it's do all the little things at an elite level. Um, well, you know, she also has a wide variety of skill set of herself, so she can attack Timpson in some other ways, you know, when she's on defense. Um, so, you know, you just, we, against her, especially keeping her off the boards, we got to be really, really fundamental in our box outs because she's going to out jump all of us. And, and that's okay. We, I tell our kids that all the time. It's okay. We're not going to out jump anyone. We haven't for two years, and I'm totally fine with that. But we can be more disciplined. We can be fundamental. And that's why we've always been a, a high level defensive rebounding team dating back to my days at Dayton. We've been a top 25 defensive rebounding team because when we're disciplined and do things the right way, we box out and now we're able to run. Shay talked about Jasmine kind of brings like a quiet, like a calming presence. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that with her? And like, what is yeah. it about her that maybe allows to find that so early and being here? Yeah, she is. She's just, that's her personality. She's very just calm, cool, collected. Um, and then she, go, she can go out there and, and kind of be a, a killer. So um, I think it's just, it's her. Um, and I think that's good. I think, he, you know, everyone leads in different ways. Some people are super vocal. Some people are more calm in it. And I see that being kind of her leadership style. Um, so I'm challenging her all the time to be more of a leader, be more of a vocal presence uh, and get that experience this year because next year, obviously, we're graduating a lot of our leaders. So, um, but no, she does. She just brings a calming presence to us. Um, your players have talked a lot about their confidence, having a good yeah. mindset. How do you make sure that when they're on the court against such a tough team, they keep their confidence high, keep their mindset in a good spot? We talk about all the time about our responses, and it's something that we, you know, you've seen last year. Sometimes our responses were, were good, and sometimes they they weren't. We didn't respond quick enough, and now it can snowball into one mistake can lead to five or six. So all the time, trying to keep your confidence levels high is, is really, again, it's, it's a mindset. It's 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 focus it's discipline to be able to get yourself back after a good play and or a bad play how are you going to respond and basketball is a game of mistakes there's gonna be a lot of mistakes throughout a 40 minute game the team that wins is the team that can respond quicker in a more positive way and we've worked on that you know for the last year and a half uh, a lot you talked about just what jazz a holistic approach on friday mm -hmm. but you seem to have done that with that just yeah. seemed to be a philosophy of the program. Yeah. How, what does that kind of look like and maybe what's led to you taking that approach? I think I've always had that, you know, and, and obviously Dr. Cook has worked with us at, at Dayton in all my years there. Um, and now having her over here, I just believe that if number one on my ladder of, of what needs to be in order is your mind has to be right. Your, your mind's number one. And then everything else kind of goes from there. Basketball can't be number one if your mindset's not right. So I've always just really believed in the mental approach and, and how powerful, you know, the, the mind is and, and your ability to, to produce and your ability to respond to adverse situations. So with that, you know, we talk about it a lot. It's not just basketball. It's it's everything, you know, your, your mind, your nutrition, your strength and conditioning, your recovery. Everything matters, and especially at the highest level, you get you gotta you gotta be elite in all those areas. So um, it's just something that we've always embraced, and, and now here at Illinois, you know, you have the resources with, you know, personnel and also recovery and the equipment um, that you gotta take advantage of it. So it's always been kind of who we are and, and, and what we want to be about. We talk about depth a lot, and I don't mean in terms of physically, but it would probably be a better question for Makaira or, or Jen, but to know that maybe they don't have to be at, like their best version every single mm -hmm. night because there's more maybe around them. Like, How have you seen that, if at all, help them? I still want to be the yeah, best not to version. suggest you don't want them to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I have to yeah. put up no, you know, I don't, I don't know if they've really thought about it, and, and that's okay, too. Like, I want them... No, my thing with them is, is also, and sometimes you see this with, with seniors and especially with fifth years, they want it so bad, right? They want it so bad. They have such high expectations and sometimes it can paralyze you a little bit. I want, I'm the, really the last few days, I'm just telling them, I just want them to play and, and be you and, and do what you do. Don't, tr they're almost trying so hard to make everything perfect and then it, then you don't play like you're capable of playing. So right now my message is just be you, do you, 
um, go out there and have fun, like enjoy playing the game, um, you know, and then hopefully throughout these games and they don't have to play 40 minutes, um, but if they're playing really well and, and they're in the condition to play, they're, they're going to do that too. Anyone, yeah, I'm going to keep who's, who's playing well out there. Um, but hopefully they'll see that and they can just be fresher in mind and then fresher in their body too. Uh, with the mental fortitude of your team, how is your squad embracing going into this game as the underdogs? I think, you know, that's what I like. I, I like being the underdog. I, I like having people overlook us. Um, but at the end of the day, Florida State's a really good team. So we got to come, come ready to go. We got to come and play at a high level. We got to defend. We got to have D, our D trans has to be, you know, on point. We got to be able to hit shots. You know, even in the Lewis game, if we made some shots, we missed nine layups, you know, we missed free throws. Like you can't do that against a top 20 team uh, and, and expect to beat them. So we got to do the little things at a high level, do, do simple really, really well.